All right, we're already laughing. Welcome to what we're calling the next episode of Fundraising Outside the Box with Karen and Joe. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, Karen. Hey, everybody. It's uh, Karen Waldall um, coming to you from Decatur, Alabama. Um, we have with us a special guest tonight, Jennifer Canavan. She is a Making Strides volunteer and um, raises a heck of a lot of money. We're going to give her the floor and let her talk a little bit about her fundraising. Um, but why don't you introduce yourself, first of all, Jennifer, and let us know how you got involved in Strides. Sure. Um, Jennifer Canavan from Brooklyn, New York. I walk in Staten Island making Strides from Brooklyn. <laughs> Brooklyn, two to one tonight. <laughs> I think Alabama loses, period, anyway, so <laughs> it matters. Um, I actually started walking with breast cancer walks in 2013 um, for Avon, which is the Avon 39. It was a two day, 39 mile walk and actually started as more of a physical challenge to see if I could do it because I had had a total hip replacement the year before. So it was almost like a, can I do it? You know, let's see what happens. And the challenge was you had to raise $1,500 to participate. And I raised $2,600 and was ecstatic. And um, four years later, in um, 2017, I started walking for Making Strides and was up to $9,000. And last year, I raised just over $46,000. So it was amazing, the jumps. So yeah, it grew really fast. And it's been great. It's been a great ride. So and that, those are some numbers in the right direction that we love to see. And you know what? Uh, clearly, you have the fundraising bug. You know, I follow you on uh, on social media, Jennifer, and you are a machine. So, I mean, uh, when we were talking about, you know, who our next guest would be, uh, not only we were excited that, that you were coming from the Strides world and I'm wearing my pink in honor of you. Karen is still wearing, you know, her stubborn purple or whatever you got there. Oh, she got the pink cup. I do have my, you know? my, my making strides cup. Yeah. She, she didn't get the memo that I didn't send. But, you know, I'm, I'm so excited, again, to, to bring, you know, uh, the, the strides world together in, in, in with Relay. Because, again, the common denominator here is fundraising. And, again, you are doing an incredible job, especially putting those numbers, you know, through the roof like that. Thank you. Yeah. It's been good. So, um, so I, was, I when when Joe told me that he um, actually was intrigued by you, it it all it automatically intrigued me because I thought, <laughs> God, he doesn't love anybody but himself, and for, <laughs> for him to want to follow somebody on Facebook and learn from them, I was I I had to find out what you were all about. Um, so I, you know, following Joe's lead, I I followed you and started watching your fundraising. Um, and it's nuts. <laughs> it I mean, we all think Joe is nuts, but, um, and we're right. But I've done uh, some crazy things. <laughs> it's like, you know, sometimes when I watch it, it's like watching a fundraising game show. Is, is that the best way to, uh, it is to describe like it? a game show. Yeah. We have people who put their money in their donations in and we spin a wheel and we pick winners and, yeah, it's like a game show. So, so tell everybody, because not everybody knows exactly, you know, how you do what you do. Um, tell everybody um, about just the fundamentals of your your giveaways or wh whatever you title them. OK, so it actually took off when COVID started because I couldn't have an in-person event. So I would do the annual card party or basket auction, whatever you would call it. Go around to local businesses, big companies, get donations. The last year we had it, we had about. 200 people raised about $12,000 at the one event, which was great. Um, next year, COVID hit, everything got canceled. And I'm saying, I have to do something, right? If you want to raise the funds, you want to get the funds where they have to go, I have to do something. So I started one or two little things on Facebook where people had donated things um, proactively for the next year for the fundraiser. And I said, you know what? We'll put it up with a limited number of spots, 20 spots, five bucks a person. Everybody donates right into the page, fills it up. Okay, great. So I get this wheel, download the wheel. The wheel spins with everybody's name. Somebody comes out a winner. And I mean, it's like being at a card party without being at the card party. And you, the <laughs> odds of winning are better for the people who, because you don't have 50 tickets in a, in a basket, you know, and it's people really, really grabbed onto it during COVID. So it was a great experience to kind of grow that and start that there. 
Right, and, and then I see that depending on what, what what the prize is or what the donation is, you change the number of uh, you change the number of participants and and, and the buy and the so number of spots. Yeah, so higher value prizes are going to be a little more a spot, maybe ten dollars, twenty spots, depending on the value of the prize, what you're looking to raise for it. If you set the price point too high, people kind of shy away and look at it like, nah, it's not worth it. Um, the lower amount of spots you can do, the better, because people feel like they have better odds. So if I could do 10 spots versus 20, then it's only 10 people. Their odds are one in 10. They feel like it's better. They're more likely to buy and they're more likely to buy more than one because they feel like their odds are better. So yeah, definitely fluctuating in price and in spots. How often do you, like, I've been watching you and it's like, it seems like every day you've got one or two of these going on. Yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't know how you keep up because <laughs> I can't keep up. But how, how do you, like, how often do you do it? How, you know, is it the same people over and over that are bidding on it? Or, or do you have like millions of followers that, I mean, you've got Joe for God's sake. So I mean, what Absolutely. Else I'm, I'm, I'm caught up in it. It's funny because it's it's really a, just, you know, a couple of dozen people that consistently buy every now and then somebody new comes into the, the mix and somebody will invite somebody. We'll do a giveaway, almost like a door prize and say, you know, if you invite friends over to the page, we'll put you in this random raffle and spin the wheel and see if you win something. So, you know, so did Joe get credit for me? So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I lost two points on that one. <laughs> That's that. Yeah. So great. So, so, so it's a core of people and, and again, word of mouth. And, and, and it, this is yeah. entirely that you run this through social media. Is, Just through Facebook. Yep. yep. That is, that is really amazing. And, and um, where do you, where do you get these items from? I mean, are you out soliciting for items or are they, you know, people just. So normally, yes, but with COVID, I could not hit up the mom and pops. So with, when COVID hit, it was, you know, the restaurants were out of the question local mom and pops were out of the question because I know they would give because they know me and they know what the cause is, but I felt bad to ask for it. So I went out to my network of friends. I went out on Facebook. I started sending private messages to people. You know, you, I know you're a car party lover, right? You're always there. And there's stuff that you want that you don't need that's sitting in the basement or it's sitting in the attic or wherever it is in the closet, Christmas gifts you got that you're not going to use. I won't tell anybody you donated it. Let me know and I'll come pick it up. So it's really just soliciting out to, to friends and family and everybody's been great. I mean, people contact me consistently saying, I have something for you. I found something. So it's, it's great. People have been really generous. So, yeah. And and how long does it take you to fill the 15, 20 slots, however many slots? I mean, is it typically like Depends on the price. <laughs> Gotcha. So the other day, my dad actually was nice enough. He donated a projector with a screen for outdoors, which is perfect wow. weather for now, right? The outdoors movies and um, a speaker system. So he donates it. I put it up and it sold out in an hour. And it was wow. 10 a spot, 20 spots, quick $200 made. I put an oven out for it. So well, all straight of, to making strides. A couple of weeks ago, she put up a jar of peanut butter and I bought all 50 spots in two minutes. And uh <laughs> I am a, I'm a nut for peanut butter. <laughs> but yeah, every now and then you have something that doesn't move. Um, we'll put up stuff, you know, get stuff together and put up a basket and people will look at it and be like, nah, not really two or three. So, spots so what do you do in that situation? What do you do? I give it a week or so. And I say, you know what? I didn't put any money out for it. There's still money coming into making strides. So I let people know last chance every now and then somebody will buy one or two spots, you know, just because it's a last chance on it. And I spin it with who's on the wheel. Gotcha. So that's great. I, I, I could see people yes. like who want to get the thing done, pushing it to their friends and say, Hey, you know, take the last two spots. So we yeah, can take them, get the it done. Yeah, that's exactly. Great. Exactly. That's great. So you, so, you, so you get your donors working for you on that. Yep. That really is amazing. Um, the thing that I love the most about this and, and Karen and I always talk about it, this thing is scalable. I mean, listen, it's, it's, it's going to be hard to replicate what you do. Cause like I said, and like Karen, so you are, you're a machine. But just this concept is so easy, rep easy to replicate on, on, on a grander scale or even on a smaller scale. And uh, the type of prizes also range, like you said, from projectors to, you know, we joked before, you know, uh, pretzels and cookies. Yeah. So, uh, you know, See, I need to clean out my pantry right now. So this, this might be how I start. <laughs> it, 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 it's snack just bundle. amazing. Do a snack bundle. Yeah, it's, it's little things. I mean, movie theater popcorn, some DVDs or, uh, you know a Netflix or some kind of a gift card or something like that. And 
people bite for it. So it's yeah, yeah which is which, which is great because again, one of the biggest you know obstacles, or or at least you know sometimes uh, volunteers feel that way, is that they don't think they can get uh, items that are worthy of uh, a contest like this. But again, uh, if, if we take a look at your page, again, you could do it with almost anything. I just think people love to kind of. I think they love the action. And well, they the love fact, to win. People yes, want to win, and if your odds are good, man. And the spinning of the wheel, you know. Yeah, it's the so excitement. Good. Yeah, definitely. It's so far ahead of Karen and I sticking our hands into like a brown paper sack, for, you know, looking for a piece of paper that hasn't been crimped. And some people still love that. So over the summer, we did something similar. We did a virtual card party. And yes, I, I set that. up tables in the yard and we did the ticket pull out of the container just for everybody. Who so I guess I'm want the confused because I thought one. a card party was like people sitting around playing, playing like bridge. So <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people think that, but um, card parties have evolved into basket auction type events. And it depends so on. out of the loop. Yeah, it depends on. <laughs> I'm on too busy cycling the south or something. It. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, card party, basket auction, tricky tray, kind of all the same. So last year, last year you said you raised how much? Just over forty six thousand. And this is all in these quick little auctions. All in these quick little auctions. Holy last cow. year there was nothing in person. Wow. I just think you know when I see numbers like that get totaled by how you're doing it. To me, it always says I'm always marvelled by the interaction because that's really what that demonstrates. It's not like you have somebody coming in. You did ten auctions and you raised that money. You have literally, you know, hundreds of of, of, of interactions where not only are they having the fun of uh, you know going for whatever you know your prizes that night, but again they get the messaging constantly because you do a great job in, in, in all your posts reminding people, hey, you know, uh, I'm raising money for this. You let them know about your goals. You remind them that we we still need uh, the money for the research, despite right. what's going on. You kind of, you know, so I, I think you lay it all out there and, and people are kind of participating with that in mind, which is really, you know, that's the perfect combination for a fundraiser. Yeah. So, um, you know, a couple, a couple, I don't know when it was, a month ago or so, we, we talked to the um, Hall of Famers about telling your story. So what, why do you participate in Making Strides? So I walk for my friend Janet's mom, Argentina, who lost her battle to breast cancer a few years ago. Um, she got some resources and some assistance through American Cancer Society, including the wig program, which was very important to her and making her feel normal with her treatments and the things that she was going through. So I walk for Janet's mom, Argy, and our team is Argy's Angels. So yeah, I walk for Argentina. Excellent. Excellent. How many people are on your team? It's myself and Janet and then whoever else wants to come. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> so, here I was going to invite you to come family. play on my team. <laughs> You're going to have her come cycle the South, right? With her, with her, with her snack pack in tow. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'll bring the cookies. <laughs> so here's my big question. You know, if, you know, when we'll, we'll say when things get back to, you know, quote unquote normal, are you going to change your fundraising uh, uh, philosophy? I'm always habit? looking to adapt because I don't want things to get stale. Um, I do do several small kind of out of the box things during the year. So I do a um, change for the cure where I pick up change from people and fill up a vase. And when the vase is filled, I roll it and everybody gets to guess how much is in there. And somebody wins a small prize that somebody donated like a gift card or something. So Joe, um, good. Yeah, the, <laughs> the last batch of that was $266. So it was, you know, little things like that add up. So, you know, you start small and you grow big. It's, it really, really That's awesome. happens, but I can't wait for in-person events because some people really, really love being the captive audience and in in-person events. So, but people do get addicted online. It, it, it is a they fun do. thing. You know, we're all captive to some extent, and, and I think you know what this uh, the, the the way you do it really gives people a chance to stay involved and, and to be interactive. Yeah, um, and it's great for people who are out of state that can't come to the events, right? So people who can't travel into your in-person. If you got them online, there's still another way to help out and support and donate that money in. So, yeah. How, how do you handle the fulfillment on the, because I, I know that's probably a question a lot of people are going to have. How do you handle the fulfillment of uh, for the prize winner? So I disclose for the prizes that I have my, in my possession that they're local pickup in Brooklyn. So okay. people come to me to pick them up 
or I meet them somewhere if they're somewhere local. If it's something that can be shipped, I'll say that on the post, but I'm very careful to say whether it's a local pickup or I can ship it to you direct. Because that kind of influences whether they'll want to buy or not. Right. I mean, she made me pay the toll on a, on a jar of peanut butter, but like I said, it was worth it. I would go... Uh, I would but go you bought your... five of them, so it was worth the trip. <laughs> That's really great. So, so again, for those of uh, for those of our volunteers out there that surf Facebook, what's what's the name of your Facebook page where you you do this damage? It's Something Making that... Strides Virtual Fundraiser Jen's Walk, Very so good. that you can kind of find. So it. at this point, I'm guessing it's flashing up in front of us. Right, right, right. Through the miracle of our uh, our of Lindsay Pugh, I will get edited back in. <laughs> Well, that's really, that's really fantastic. Uh, very exciting. So happy to have you here tonight, Jennifer. To, Thank you. Uh, happy to be here. Absolutely. And, and here we are just days away from October, which is the big Making Strides uh, month. So that's kind of, I've got to, I've got to go dig out my pink t-shirt. I, you know, I, I was just, I was not prepared for this. So I apologize. <laughs> We're going, to, we're going to give you a break, but yes, it, it is it is Strides Month and uh, a great time to mention the fund. Oh, I mean that's challenge. right. It, it is. We are in October right now. I forgot. <laughs> right. This will be airing just as October. Just uh, we just passed October first, so this will be airing um, just at the start of October and just at the beginning of the fund the breakthrough challenge, which is taking place October the fifth, which was two days ago. Right. Even though it's next week, it's two days ago by the time this airs. <laughs> we're going to confuse people. For seven days, and we're going to raise five million in nine days. So, I mean, our numbers are all over the place. Um, <laughs> but At this point, we've probably already raised the five million dollars. We're just, you know, absolutely. icing on the cake. So, And I think if we've confused you enough at this point, probably something else will be flashing across the screen. So <laughs> yeah. those of you that really want to know what's going on. Or uh, could there's going to be a bunch of bleeps. <laughs> Either but way. I do remember, I do remember that during these nine days, twice the uh, rewards on, on all your fundraising. So you yes. get all those great, uh, great things and uh, do it a little faster. Do you ever recycle rewards, uh, Jennifer, when you're doing your, your prizes? All the time. I know. <laughs> I go to my friend's card parties and win things to raffle off at my. <laughs> Sweet. So, yeah. Right. That's that's what Karen and I do too. We, we we take those things and we turn them over and over again, and uh, everybody always gets excited. But you know, um, I don't know, Karen. Absolutely, what do you, think? you know, it, a lot of people are um, are actually afraid to take advantage of those incentives because they think, oh, it's money against the, um, you know, the organization. It, it takes away from your fundraising, but they have proved time and time again that that money actually comes back several times over so um you know take advantage of it um of earn, them, incentive. earn them claim them and uh and then, and then use again. them yeah. absolutely absolutely <laughs> well listen this has been great jennifer thank you so much again so excited about your fundraiser you're gonna get like five million new followers oh, because I, I, you know, everybody watching here today is gonna is gonna come join your facebook page that'd so. be great we'll blow my goal out of the water i'm ready and with and with five million new followers come eight million new questions so that is <laughs> happy to help if i can <laughs> but when they're asking that means they're 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 excited about it so again i think once That's people good. check it out a little bit more they're going to see that you do a great job you know um just year after year and uh, we're excited to have you here tonight thank you so much thank uh, you and, and keep it up thank Thanks. you yeah thank awesome you. job i want to can't wait to hear what your total is this year after this year so fingers crossed yeah. and then <laughs> always our our last call to action if you you folks out there in uh whatever land you're in have some fundraising ideas that you want to share you know let karen and i know about it and um if we're mildly interested we'll probably put you on our show <laughs> <laughs> So, or if they're pressuring us to do another one and we just have nothing else, we may pick you also. You never know. There are just so many ways you, you, you can make it onto this uh, this thing. But uh, anyway, great, great job. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, everybody. Jennifer, for joining Get us. out there. Uh, power of Pink for October. Earn those rewards. Let's raise that money. All that money is going to be going to research during the challenge. Uh, the research, the need for it doesn't stop. And uh, 
everything that everyone does, you know, is, is an important part of it. So good night, everyone. Thanks again. Good night.